Unemployment is starting to spike in the San Antonio market. Where's that gonna show up in the real estate market? Stay tuned to the very end to see where. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Investor's Journey. I'm your host, John Barr with Prime Homes. And in this video, we're going to be breaking down the San Antonio market to see what's driving this market, why prices have been increasing so much, why we've seen such massive appreciation over the last couple months. And that is what we really cover in this channel is the local real estate market and tips and tricks that we're using in our very market to be successful. So if you like our content, Go ahead and give us a like, give us a subscribe, and we would much appreciate that. And if you are interested, on December 16th, we are holding a live workshop teaching people how to wholesale houses in today's real estate market. So if you're interested in that, check out the link below. So let's go ahead and jump right into the local market. So now, average sales price in San Antonio is just shy of 310000 but that is still a 12.56% increase year over year. Anytime you see that Y over Y, that means year over year. This time last year, how much higher on a percentage basis is the prices? Median sales price up to 255, which is a 15.1% increase year over year. And this is what I think is really driving this market is our total sales is up 21.1% from this time last year, up to 3,436, which is just absolutely insane for this time of year. Usually October, November are when prices are start or not prices well prices and sales volume is continuing to go down a little bit but this year in the corona land it is much different so the average rental price is up to 1545 which is a 6.3 percent increase year over year so even in the rental prices we're seeing big price increases typically that number sits between one two maybe three percent every now and then never above three percent but we are starting to see this move over into the rental prices as well as add with this six percent increase so if your landlord that's fantastic to see rent starting to keep pace because if prices go up too fast for too long and you don't have the rental prices, it starts eating into your cash flow because taxes are going up faster than the rents are going up, which isn't good over the long term. The unemployment is at 1.124 million. That is a decrease of 4.89% in decreased year over year, which is no surprise. But what really kind of sucks is we lost just shy of 30,000 jobs. And that's not something we're wanting to see long term as we move into this recovery. So to see the unemployment spike 1.17% up to 7.76, that's not a good thing we're wanting to see. But I'm not too concerned in the short term, because that is kind of the trend, as you'll see in some of these later videos, that it's kind of a seesaw all the way down. As long as the long-term trend is back down to where we need it to be, that is good. Months of inventory, very important number. So your balance market between uh, buyer and seller, they say, is about six months of inventory. And what that means is if no new houses got put for sale and the same pace of consumption continued, how long would it take for every house to be sold on the market? Anytime we're lower than that, like we are now at 2.95 months inventory, means we're in a seller's market. The seller has more negotiating power because there's more buyers in the market than there are sellers. To see a 0.88 month increase in the previous month, I'm not too concerned to that considering where we started. And this time last year on November 19, even though not the 2019 was still a gangbuster years for real estate, was at 3.91 and we're still down at 2.95. So it is slowing down and cooling off a little bit, but it's still insanely red hot from where we started to look at where the numbers are today. So now let's look at the median sales price over the long term. So coming out of the last recession of the 2008 debacle of the lending crisis, we bottomed out real estate prices around 2010, 2011. And pretty much since then, you can really see that prices have gone up in the summer, down in the winter, up in the summer, down in the winter, and always in an upward trajectory. And what you're looking at is our real estate market and our overall trends. That up in the summer, down in the winter, up in the summer, down in the winter, until you get to 2020 where we've gone up in the summer and we have continued to go up and we're staying up and staying way up here at this 255 at all time highs, which is not typical for this time of year. But with the low unemployment, low months inventory, it's really no surprise to see that happening. Monthly rents, it's no surprise that it follows pretty much the same trend up in the summer, down in the winter, up in the summer. 
and it is following the trend down in the winter time, but it's not falling as far, and we are staying at a high price compared to we were the, uh, this time last year with that 6% bump. But how do you use this information, especially when it comes to rentals? What we do in our business is all of our rental properties in between the or leases in between the months of March, April, and May. Now we spread them out because if you have a ton of rental properties and they all end in one month, you get really busy trying to lease all those properties out. So we like to spread them out. And the reason we do that, and because the data shows it, that we want to get up to that next level of premium rent. So if a tenant does move out, we can have time to get the renovations done, new fresh coat of paint, uh, carpet, whatever we're doing, new appliances, get it back on the market and try to push the rents to catch that, catch that next wave. You are the landlord. There's nothing that says that you have to give them a 12 month lease. So if we rent something out in, say we get a new property in the summertime, do the renovations, get it on the market in August, it's not, not typical for us to give a 15 month lease to get them back onto that. We've done 16, we've done nine, seven, 18 to get them on to end that same cycle. So when that tenant does move out and does turn over, we can get that next premium price point of the rental property. So now onto the 20 year unemployment. And uh, this is the number that everyone has really been following to see like, how is this job market recovering? So until the coronavirus all came thing and shut everyone down and everyone got laid off, you can see the last uh, dot com bubble and you can see the last 2008 financial crisis of what those kind of look like and how the unemployment went up stayed at the top for a while and slowly trended back down. And that's why I'm not overly concerned about the unemployment going back up because you look at the last recession and it's kind of like a seesaw. It goes up for a little bit, down, up a little bit, down, up a little bit and down. As long as we continue to hit lower lows and not and lower highs, that's going to be good. What I will be concerned about is if the unemployment spikes back up goes back up again and stays up there as time goes on because unemployment is a big, big factor in the economy and where money is flowing because people if people aren't employed. They obviously can't afford houses. So in our in any real estate market, you're going to want to see steady employment and continue adding a job because there's nothing worse for a real estate market than high unemployment and an exodus of population. Good thing is we do have population coming and jobs being added to San Antonio, but we need to see that unemployment continuing to fall. So now the year over year appreciation. Now this is something that I started tracking to see what the appreciation is doing long term. So you can see coming out of the last recession, uh, right down that 2011, 2012 prices kind of were going down and now they've shot back up and we were hitting this 10% for quite some time. And before the coronavirus hit, you can see we were kind of on a slow downward trajectory of the appreciation starting to slow down. But once the coronavirus hit, everything got shut down, everything opened back up. We saw this massive price appreciation and that's kind of really what you get when unemployment or I mean interest rates really fall to the floor and stay there for a significant period of time a lot of refinances a lot of people want to move from apartments getting into housing and that's really sucked a lot of demand or really risen the amount of demand and the supply has really came disappeared from the market and people aren't as listing as normally as they would and that's really kind of driving this inventory these appreciations and making these values go through the roof and where it's pretty much been the last couple months so now you ask yourself, John, that's great. I know the prices are going up. Unemployment is starting to recover. We've seen massive appreciation for a long period of time. I understand the cycles of real estate, but now how do I really use this information? Like where do I go to market? Where do I go to pick up houses to really kind of get that appreciation that we're all looking for, for our rental properties? Where's the best price points to really go in and target for those areas? And that's something we do is we track and data by zip code and by price point to know where the best place to pick up houses really is. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in data now. So the first area that we really kind of look at this data is by price range. So in San Antonio, break it down by $50,000 a piece until we get to the higher end. And to what we're looking for here is where is the bulk of the inventory really being turned over and what is the months of inventory for those price ranges? So you can really see, I remember this, we had about three, 3,400 sales here in San Antonio that this data derives from. The bulk of that is done right here in that 100 or a pretty, pretty significant amount 
almost a third of it is in this 150 to $250,000 price point. So for us, for our renovations, our fix and flips, our rental properties, we want to be in this zip code because this is where the appreciation over long term is going to be continue to be driven up by these super low months of inventory. Because you look at one month of inventory and the 150 to 200,000 price point, 589 sales are done just in that one zip code alone or with that one price point alone. So our rental properties, we love to stay down in that price point. And the reason for that is, is builders can't build inner city housing at that price point. Land is way too expensive, lumber prices are too expensive, and labor is really expensive. So if you can find a house on that quarter acre lot, that's three bedroom, two bath at that 150,000, 170,000 price point, over the long term, this is naturally gonna have appreciation. We feel like it's a pretty safe bet to get cash flow and get the appreciation that we are looking for out of that. So the next way we look at the data is by zip code. Where is, so we know the price points, we know where the most in-demand housing is, now where's the most in-demand place to live based on that same month's inventory? So you can kind of see over here, it's a 78251 is the number one zip code out with a single month of inventory. Now, for those of you that aren't in San Antonio or that do live here, 78251 is a very large zip code. There's a lot of housing in that zip code. So to see one month of inventory is just absolutely insane. And if you've been over in that side of town, there's a lot of growth going on over there. A lot of people are moving there. So it's no surprise that you can see that in two years, we've gone from 183 as the average sales price all the way up to 247,000 on a zip code. So we never say invest for appreciation and appreciation alone, but that is that icing on the cake that over time is you will probably get more appreciation than you will cash flow depending on where you're investing and what your investing style is. Now for us, that is something we invest for both. So if it's a higher appreciation, we'll take less cash flow. If we don't think there's gonna be much appreciation, if we're holding a rental property, we are going to want much higher cash flow because over the term, long term, we know there's not gonna be a whole lot of appreciation, but if it's shelling off a great, good amount of cash flow, we will buy that property. So now the caveat to the lowest months of inventory is the highest months of inventory. Now remember that balance market is that six months of inventory. And so this isn't your typical market we were seeing like six, eight, nine, or probably 12 months ago of what these numbers look like because it still looks like these are hot zip codes. But this is information that is still useful. So if you're watching this and you want to see the full list of zip codes, go ahead and comment below, get a hold of us, and I'll make sure you get the full list of all of the zip codes here in San Antonio from lowest to highest and the uh, most current information. But now we really use this information a lot. So not to say these are bad zip codes by any means. They're not. It's just something that you need to understand what the data is telling you. And what this data is really telling you is what this is your competition level in your area. So that's why it's important for you, an investor, to understand what the competition level is. Because if you have three, four, five, six months of inventory, we know that like, hey, that money can still be made, but we know there's a lot of inventory here. So that means we need to buy better. So we have the in the budget to put more money into the things that really sell a house. That's your kitchens, your baths, your finish outs, do staging, do landscaping, take professional photos, get it on the market to make sure your house is not that one that's sitting on the market for that three, four, five, six months. Because you think about it, as investors, especially real estate, we use a lot of debt to do our properties to get our returns. So every day that goes by that your house sits on the market, that interest payment comes straight out of your bottom line. So if you can put money into this house, these houses that make them sell quicker, especially if you're at the higher price point of three, four, five hundred thousand, those interest payments hurt. They get expensive. So it makes it worth it to buy better, know your data, put the data to use, put the money to use, and make sure your house comes out with a better ROI at the very end. So there you have it, folks. That really concludes this month's San Antonio real estate market update. If you found this information useful, we would absolutely love it if you give us a like, give us a subscribe, leave us a comment, or interact with the video some way. So as a reminder, we do have a live workshop coming up on December 16th. The link is down in the comments below. Also, 
also think about checking out some of the other content where we go over tips and tricks that we use in our everyday business. Like this video right here, where we were able to use the short sale process to pick up a property less than what it could have been sold for, buy it, renovate it, and put it on the market the right time to get create ourselves a nice spread. We'll see you guys next month.